And let's go ahead and log in to your hosted Chef server. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, now that you're logged in, let's make sure that you first select the Fedor organization. Mm -hmm. uh, it's down there in the middle of the page. Okay, so now if you click on the cookbooks link, mm -hmm. we should see that the Omnibus Updater cookbook is now available here. Mm -hmm. All right, the next step for us to do is to tell your node that it needs to run the Omnibus Updater cookbook. Now there are a couple of ways that we can do this. Let's first, for this one, we'll do it with the browser. Oh, so, okay. so again in your browser, go ahead and click on the nodes tab. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you've stopped screen share. Oh, there we go. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Good, good. Uh, nodes. And let's click the edit link next to Patrick VM. Okay. Okay, so let's just pause here for a moment and talk about exactly what we see and, and go over some concepts here with Chef. So basically, each node within your Chef uh, organization or within your Chef, Chef managed infrastructure will have a run list associated with it. The run list tells it which recipes to execute. Now, our recipes are Ruby files that are stored within our cookbooks. So as a, as a matter of fact, if you look at uh, Cookbook's Omnibus Updater on your local file system, you'll see that there are a number of recipes. Those recipes are all listed here on your screen as well as the available recipes. Now, um, we in, in another session, we will create some cookbooks, so we'll have plenty of time to dig into additional details about cookbooks. I know for a fact that uh, the recipe that we need to run is the default Omnibus Updater recipe. So okay. if you just drag that across to the run list and then scroll to the bottom, you should see a Save button. Okay. Okay, so you've just updated the run list for your node. Um, the next cookbook that we add, we'll update it using Knife instead of the uh, web browser because I think that's a lot more efficient. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but let's just go ahead and move back to your uh, terminal mm -hmm. and let's see the result of having this cookbook applied. The next thing that we need to do is we need to run Chef Client on the Vagrant instance. There are basically two ways that we could do that. One way is we could actually SSH into the server and execute Chef Client, but um, Vagrant makes that a lot easier for us. We can simply type in Vagrant space provision, and that will rerun Chef Client for us. Ah, uh, okay. So anytime we make a change to our cookbooks on the server or the run list for uh, our server, we can just run Vagrant provision, and it will run Chef Client. Mm -hmm. And we'll see here that it's kicking it off. And remember before we had no run list, and now we see that there is a run list, Omnibus Updater. The first thing that's going to happen is the Vagrant instance will download that cookbook from the Chef server and store it locally. And next it will go ahead and execute the, the, um, the Ruby code that was defined within that recipe. Mm -hmm. And so it's doing that now, and you see that it's processing a remote file. So a remote file is a resource type within Chef. And what it's doing is it's downloading uh, the 10.16.2 Ubuntu uh, deb package, and it's going to run through that. Mm -hmm. That's maybe interesting to, to discuss a little bit the concept of resource, because um, that's what it's defined in the cookbook, isn't it? That's right. Uh, it is indeed. So a cookbook, again, contains recipes. Recipes are essentially a collection of resources. Uh, so um, <clears throat> there are a number of predefined resources that come with Chef, and then you have the ability to create your own resources as well. What I'd like to do is revisit that, uh, that okay. the, the concept of resources, when we write our first cookbook. I think that okay. that's when it will make the most sense to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, if you run uh, 
let's go ahead and run another vagrant provision. Uh, by running it again, we should see two things. First of all, we should see that the Chef Client version is now the same as on your system, 10.16.2. Ah, oh, great. So, so there, in fact, you see that we've upgraded Chef. And this time the provision ran much, much faster. As you can see, it didn't have to download the cookbook from the uh, server again because it already had the latest copy. Uh, and it didn't have to uh, re-download the Debian package or rerun the installation of that. Uh, this is what we call item potency within Chef. So Chef is idempotent in that it will see you've asked it to download a file. Well, it already has the file on the file system, so it's not going to perform that action for you. Okay. All so right. It's, uh, quite safe in that I, sense that you don't overwrite stuff or. That's right. That's right. Okay, so 